Oh, you guys are here. Sorry, I was just trying to refresh this model. It won't be long. Let me just hit a refresh. Refresh. What? Microsoft Mashup Evaluator Message Based Output Stream Plus Binary Chunk Message. What the hell is that? Tr trust me, this was working in the morning. What? Guys, this is enough. We need to build an error reporting mechanism in Power BI. You with me? Let's go. All right, this might happen to you as well. You're super excited about your model. You hit a refresh and the error slaps the model on your face. Now let's just go try to build an error checking mechanism in Power Query that can actually take a look at what error was produced while hitting the refresh in Power Query. All right, people, we are in Power BI and that's where I have three tables, the sales, the products and the customers. Everything seems to be working fine. But with the customer's query right here, I can certainly see that there are a few errors. Let's just peek into these errors just for a second to find out what these errors are in the first place. So if I click on the side of the customer key, I can see that this had to be a number. This is the column of integer but somebody happened to just write a dash that was not you know valid integer value now if I just maybe scroll down a bit I can see that in the gender column also there is an error if I click on the side of the error maybe somebody was trying to write a VLOOKUP through some other file and this generated the NA error which obviously is going to error out when Power Query catches that error now these errors could certainly happen if your data is managed by Excel and once in a while these errors could crop up into your data model now let's just try to build a mechanism through which Power Query catches these errors and reports these errors rather than just not loading the data. How do we start? The first thing that I'm going to do is add an index column, just the counting. The counting is actually going to help us to report that which row has the error. Let's just start with that. How do you do that? I'm going to go to the add columns tab create the index column and start with one. So now this is my counting one till, till the end of the row. The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to find out that in the entire customers table, which are the rows which contain the errors. So there is a table icon right here on this table icon. If I just click and if I say that, please keep the errors, this is going to keep all the rows which contain the error. Now you can see that the error could perhaps be on any of the column, customer key, name, gender. There could be also other columns that could have an error. So let me just you know, do an unpivoting to be able to collect all the names of the columns and the errors in just another column. You'll understand once I do the unpivot. Why don't we actually click on the index column, which is most likely not going to have the error because we just created that. I'm going to right click on this column and just going to say that unpivot all the other columns. Now this produces um, an unpivoted structure of the query, which is where I have the column name right here and the value of the column in the next column right here. Now let's just not call this as an attribute. Let's just call this as the column name. So column name. All right, press enter. This becomes column name. Now we have been able to get uh, all the columns which have the errors, but you can see that uh, row number 12 had the error, but row number 12 did not have the error in all the columns. So customer key was the only column which had the error. The name did not have the error or the gender did not have the error. So we'll actually do uh, the keep error step once again, but this time not on the entire table, but just on the value column. So on this particular column, I'm just going to select, go to the home tab and say that I would like to keep the errors. So now I am only keeping the row of the error and the column of the error and what the value is right here. The problem is, however, if you try to load this particular query in your data model, this will not be able to load because this is still an error. Now we need a way to be able to capture what the error is and then report it back into our Power BI model so that somebody can take a look at it and fix the errors and the query starts to work again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to use a try and the otherwise keyword, not the otherwise, just the try keyword. I have done a very detailed video on try and the otherwise. If you haven't really taken a look at the try and the otherwise video that I have done it in the past, I suggest that you please take a look on that video. All right, let's just do that. So I'm just going to create a column. Note that what we're trying to do here now is trying to capture what the error is, right? So I'm just going to create a column and I'm just going to use the try keyword, just only the try keyword. Try keyword is like the if error of Power Query. So try and then I'm just going to feed the value column right here and just say, okay, that's all that I do. Now what has happened is that Power Query tried to evaluate this particular value and obviously it found an error. Now this particular record that we have got 
is the explanation of that error. Now, once we start to expand that record, you'll understand that what the error is. If I just maybe click on the expand button right here and say that I just want to know what the error is, so I'm not really going to um, check on that because the has error value is always going to return true if there was an error. Obviously, I know that. So I click on the OK and I get another record. Let's just also expand this particular record. So expand. I get three more columns, the reason, the message and the detail. Let's expand those as well. Click on OK. And we have these three other columns. It actually tells you what the error is. So we have the data format error in all of these values. It also talks about what is the message that Power Query threw as an error. And it also tells you that what was the value in that particular cell. So NA was read by uh, Power Query as null. And there were a couple of dashes right here. Now, what do we do? We get rid of this value column and we only load this table which is nothing but the row number, the column name, and the details about the error into Power BI. Now note that this table was created only because we had errors in our data. Now, if we did not have the errors, this table would have been empty. Now, obviously you can take this table and build any kind of reporting on, the, on top of that. You can count the number of rows of the error, apply slicers on the reason, apply slicers on the columns and things like that. And you can give it out to anybody and they can probably fix the errors. But we have been able to build an error reporting mechanism that actually tracks the error and reports it to the user. Okay, before you go, a quick shout out about my DAX and my Power Query courses. In case you're interested to learn DAX or Power Query right from scratch, build up your fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging, more sophisticated problems of your own data. I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Now, uh, that was all about reporting. If you have any questions around this, feel free to drop in a comment and I will be glad to reply. Thanks so much for sticking around and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.